Hello and welcome back to RC Icons. So in this episode we're going to get started on the DB01 Triple R kit. Whew! Sorry I'm out of breath. <laughs> so the DB01 was released by Tamiya in 2007, uh, November 28th to be exact. And uh, we know the DB01 to be essentially the Durga kit and the Baldry kit. So those were the two actual kits that were released with the DB01 chassis. The DB01 was um, essentially designed after the TRF501. Um, obviously the 501 is on a carbon fiber chassis. The World's Edition has more alloy than the regular 501X does, but um, the, the, the whole purpose of the Durga was to make that platform and geometry of a car affordable, right? You can still pick up DB01 Durgas today, um, $250 to $300 new in box. Um, it really is the last four-wheel drive race spec chassis. I say race spec, that's debatable. With all of the hop-ups that Tamiya does offer for the DB01, you can build uh, a very capable race car um, with the DB01 platform, but they obviously over the years did different variants of the chassis. They started with the DB01R, which basically took the DB01 and it gave it aeration shocks, uh, aluminum suspension mounts front and rear, UJs all the way around, full bearing kit, um, and a slipper clutch. And then they moved it again with the DB01RR. Um, and they sprinkled a little bit more love on it. And then the last variant, of course, is the Triple R. So the Triple R comes with all black alloy instead of the blue alloy that we're used to seeing. It came with hex hubs instead of the pin-on um, drive system of the TRFs in former DB series cars. So this particular kit actually has hex hubs on all four corners. And then it's obviously got dish wheels with hex attachment all the way around comes with uh, aeration uh, big bore aeration shocks but not in the sense of what we consider like the hop-up version where the hop-up version is blue these ones have more of a brass look to them um, to go along with that black anodized um, aluminum that that's in the kit so the other thing is, this is the only DB01, I believe, that came with uh, square edge battery placement so that you could use like modern lipos, um, where the rest of them had like a rounded cradle or um, the cradle that was rounded could be removed from the car. Obviously, with it being the, the highest spec DB01, it it's got all the bells and whistles so uh oil filled gear diffs florentine coated shocks i mean uh florentine coated bearings uj's all the way around um blah 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 so if you want to see good videos on the db01 series cars check out tamia legends glenn did a couple of different videos when he was talking about his db02 leonis um talking about the history of the db series cars um as well as the R's, um, and then getting into also the DB02, because obviously the DB02 fell between the double R and the triple R. Uh, four wheel drive, dual belt driven, um, just an awesome car. So I bought this. Now, obviously, this is a little bit newer age. Martin in Switzerland had had offered me a triple R kit a long, long time ago, and I had turned it down. And then Mark at Mechanic After Hours about a year ago um, built a triple R on his show, and the thing was just phenomenal. And uh, that was it. I was hooked. So I searched for a couple of months to get this kit. Um, they are available, but they are hard to find. So it's not a kit that you find every day. Um, since getting this kit, I've had a couple of different viewers reach out to me wanting to trade various cars for this new unbox kit. And I really 
I, I search long and hard for my cars. So I have a real hard time when it comes to like trades or selling something. Um, I honestly think that any car is available to any person provided they put the work in to find it. That's just the way I feel. Um, I wouldn't be surrounded by the cars I have if I didn't put the hours in, right? It's, it's not like I just happen across this stuff. I'm constantly looking for the cars that I have. Um, so I have a hard time when people reach out wanting something that I searched long and hard for. Um, not to be a jerk, but I, I just feel like if they put the effort in, they'd find the same thing. So part of the reason of building the kit is once it's built, um, it's no longer available as a kit for somebody else. Um, but the other part of it is I've really um, wanted to build this ever since uh, I've gotten it. Now, I've got a couple of 503s to build, 511s to build, 502s to build. So I definitely have higher spec cars that are on the build list. But this is the one that just happens to be calling my name at the present moment. And so that's what the purpose of this video is. I'm really uh, looking forward to the spec of the car, the black alloy, the, the brass style big bore shocks that stuff just it gets my juices flowing and then of course a lot of us who have dbo ones have been sprinkling love on them for a long time i know glenn's is a very high spec i know duncan mcgregor has one that's completely specced with every option part it's awesome i love that kind of stuff i have a huge bag of dbo one aftermarket parts sitting in my cabinet um, and we will probably delve into them. Now they did dual slipper clutches, regular slipper clutches. They, they, you know, they just, there's a ton of option parts for the DBO one, both by Tamiya and aftermarket. Um, so while we're building this kit, I'll probably pull out my bag of tricks. We'll probably do carbon fiber shocks on this, um, because I know it's not specced with carbon fiber shocks. So we'll probably do that. We may do a couple of other things here and there, but I'm really trying to keep the blue out of the car for the first time. I love blue bling, but this car, I really want it to be um, stealth, right? So I'm not sure if I'll do a black body shell or if it'll be a gunmetal body shell, but I want the car to be dark and mean. Um, that's the intention. So let me bring the camera over. I'll show you the kit real quick, although it's just a ba bags of parts. This is a race kit, just like a TRF or any of the other race kits. It, there's no presentation at all. I'll show you the kit real quick. We'll get the bags, you know, cut open, and we'll start building this, babe. See you in a second. The DB01 RRR. Like I said, it's a very sought after kit just because they're not around anymore, but um, it says featured components, alum aluminum front suspension mount, skid angle 12 degrees, aluminum rear suspension mount, tow in angle 3 degrees, aluminum motor heat sink, hex wheel hubs front and rear, hex hib compatible dish wheels front and rear, 39 tooth gear diff units, I know they're oil filled, aeration big bore dampers front and rear. Um, universal shafts uh, with axle ring, front and rear, slipper clutch set, Florentine coated ball bearings, and hex screws. So, we open the kit. <laughs> There's your presentation. So we have our manual. We've got our dual belts. We've got some foam dust covers. And then... Parts trees. I'm pretty sure these are the high traction arms. I know it doesn't say that in the kit, but I know the R and the double R came with high traction arms. Here's our square battery chassis. So a lot of the other chassis come with um, raised sections in the battery compartment here to take the bat to cradle a battery whereas this one's flat for um, what you would see in like a lipo battery and then these are our hex hub wheels versus the pin on style tamiya wheels that were we all know and love trying to hold the pins in place no body 
No wheels and tires. I'm sorry, no tires. We have wheels. Obviously, race spec. We have an aerial, though, so that's good. We'll slide that right back in the box because we don't use aerials anymore. I don't, at least. So we'll put that over there. The rest of our parts are in here. I actually took this kit on vacation with me this summer and never got to it. I built the Javelin. I built the TB05 um, R. And this was one I had taken because I figured it didn't matter if I showed it on camera. So this has uh, metal motor mount in it. I do have blue ones, but I don't know that I want to put blue in the car. So there's your metal heat sink, motor heat sink in black versus blue like we're used to seeing. And then these are your big bores. Now you can see the color. Let me get out a pair. Is it the same color? So the color is the same on the actual on the actual body, but you can see this has like a, a brass ring instead of the blue ring. And then the bottoms, yeah, the bottoms are still black. So just a little bit, just a little bit different. It helps make the kit just a little bit more unique. Um, so what do we want to do? I gotta find my DB01 bag. The parts. It's TA05. That's Tamiya. DT02. DB01. <laughs> now that's a pile of bling. There's rear uprights, aluminum uprights in there. There's steering bridges, there's UJs, there's slipper clutches, there is enough parts in here, this is all Tamiya too, this isn't any aftermarket, but carbon shock towers, so we'll probably do, that's a rear, um, we're going to need a front, blue heat sinks, so we have a black one in here, which is good. I want this one to be different. I think this is a this one might be a front. That's a rear. We've got double cardian shafts. We've got steering stabilizers. That's a 501X steering stabilizer. Steering bridges, double slipper clutches. Is a front damper stay in carbon. Um, I've got tons and tons and tons of DB01 parts. In fact, way more than I'll ever use, but at some point they'll end up, someone will end up needing parts and uh, we'll help them up. Double slipper clutch, what's that one? Another steering bridge, probably four steering bridges here. So we'll keep this bag of tricks out just in case there's something in there that strikes our fancy. Um, I do not see steering stabilizers, not steering stabilizers, but anti-sway bars in the kit. So we may put those on just for the fun of it. I've got more in here. DB02 propeller shaft, DB02 propeller shaft. I know there's, there's other parts in here. There's, uh... Blue screws. I've got some more UJs front and rear in my my other drawer. But let me get this organized and uh, get the stuff in the tubs, and we'll get it get going on this thing. So I'll see you in a second here, and we'll get started. All right. So steps one and two are done. So in step one was just prepping the chassis. The motor mount is in. When I opened the kit, I was a little bit um, disappointed that the motor mount was an anodized black, but I forgot that there's a cover that goes over this whole thing. You really can only see like that little bit of it on the side. Um, so really pointless to do anything more than that. They do sell a blue anodized motor mount that a lot of people will put in their Derga or their Baldry, but again, the cover covers it. You can't even see it. So, whatever. 
um, black heat sink is in, our shock um, mounts are in, black alloy shock mounts are in, and then it looks like the two steering posts are in. So that was step one. Step two was making the oil filled gear diffs and they are butter smooth, which they should be. So we're going to get into step three here where we start make, messing with the rear differential cover and shock tower. It looks like it's kind of all one piece. So I'm going to take a look at that. May put the carbon one on right away. I said I would build it regular, but it looks like the front and rears both go on at the same time. So I may just, I may just go ahead and put the carbon ones on. And then immediately it has us building the slipper clutch and getting the diffs in. So I'll bring you back here in a second. Something to show you. So steps three and four are done with carbon. Figured what the hell. Just get it done. Looks good. So the next step is actually putting in the rear diff and it had me make the belt adjusters which are the elliptical. That's twice I've dropped it. Now I gotta figure out which one it is. So I make the right one. So that's the right. So we need the left. So the the oblong, so that you can tighten the belt, and they give you setting directions for the right and the left. And then I don't know if it matters a nine, which belt? Uh, no, that's a part. That's gonna get screwed down. I'm assuming that the belts are the same size. Drive belt, that's all it says. So I'm going to assume that they're the same size. So we take a diff, put a belt on it. This is our right. Gotta make sure our left is lined up. Forget about that belt for a second. For the love of God. Why do I do this stuff on camera, he says. So now when we put it in, Side is correct. Straight up, 
straight up. And that diff is in place. And it's got the right orientation. So now this doohickey's got to go in. So the left, yep. All right, yep. And three by twelve screws. Wind two down real quick just to hold it in place and then I'll show you real quick. So when I did the uh, the carbon shock towers I used a mix between the, the car hardware and the pop-up hardware to do what I thought was right. These screws for the shocks may have to get replaced with shorter ones because the kit shock tower is way thicker than the carbon one. I did use the hop up screws on the front because they were black. The ones that came for the rear are silver. And I just thought that that would look stupid. So I just put the kit ones on for now. I have black ones if need be. And they do need to be changed. I'll, I'll change them with black ones. But we'll have to wait and see. When we go to put the shocks on. So the front one goes in exactly the same. So I'm going to get the front one in place. And then uh, it looks like it has me... You know, it has me building the slipper clutch next, actually. So like, apparently the order of service is slipper clutch and then front diff. So I'll finish putting this together and then I'll get the slipper. It does look like it's the double slipper. Maybe not. Maybe it's only the single. Doesn't really matter to me to be completely honest. I do have double slipper clutches for the DBO one. So I could put a double in, but I don't think it matters enough for what I'm doing here. It's not like I'm racing the thing. So one more screw. I'll bring you back with the slipper clutch and putting the front end together. Alright, bad gay is done. Starting to look like something. Rear carbon, diff cover, front carbon, diff cover slipper clutch in place so step one and it is on bearings feels great step one is putting that 
uh, motor cover on. Well, you're supposed to mount the motor, but they don't give you a motor in this kit, which is fine. The uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to put for a motor in it when we actually run this thing. Maybe a BZ, maybe something hotter. I do have uh, super modified 11 turn as well. CVs, shock ends, suspension mounts and plastic. Oh no, that is alloy. Black alloy too. I was uh I was kind of upset there for a second when I thought it was plastic. So that's cool. Another set of CVs. I don't know what you guys use for building tubs. Some people just use like soup tubs that they get at the grocery store. Some people use cups. I, being in my business and construction, I end up with a lot of uh, screw cut screw containers for like trim head screws and stuff, and that just happens to be what what I use. So I've got deep ones, shallow ones, and uh, it just works for me. I've got probably 50 or 60 of them right so I just take out 10 or 15 and then I can dump my individual parts in those containers and everything is nice and organized for me so first step in bag B is the motor motor plate cover slash slipper clutch cover So we're going to get that on real quick so that the slipper clutch stays in place. It's this way. I guess you can see this side of the motor plate, but once the motor's in, there's really not a whole lot to be seen. It's not like the chunk of alloy you start with, that's for sure. So, whatever. So it's two, three by twelve. Sorry, four, three by twelve. We'll just check those real quick. And then there's two long socket cap. Actually, there's four of them. Two point six by eight by four. One, two, three, four. So that's going to get my cover on. Again, we're not doing the motor right now, so I don't need any of that hardware. And then it's got me starting with some arms, which is step 11. I'm um, sorry, step 11 is steering linkage. And then it's got me working on rear. Making universal shafts rear. So it looks like we're starting with the rear end. So I'll bring you back in a second with hopefully some rear end stuff to look at. We'll see you then. All right. My beautiful wife saw me sweating up here on the 45 degree day. The rain finally stopped. Like I said earlier, it snowed last night. May have said that. May have been in the PB Mini Mustang body video. I'm not quite sure because I'm working on it at the same time. I just spit all over my car. But she brought me a nice Panera green tea. Thanks, baby. Oh, it's nice having a beautiful wife that supports your RC addiction. Brings you 
cold beverages while you're filming content for YouTube. She's a keeper. So, uh, yeah, we have the back of a car. And I apologize for not really stopping, but it's all self self-explanatory kind of stuff you've seen it all before the only thing that seems different um and you guys correct correct me in the comments i know these are the high friction arms i don't remember the regular durga having a kick on the arm but maybe it does they're definitely solid i can tell you that um so that's the rear end uj's are in um links are built obviously dust covers are on Everything feels great. Inner bearings are in. So, so smooth. So, at this point, it's going to have us get the front arms together. So, we're moving right along. We'll be getting into uh, some big ball shocks here in a matter of no time. We're, uh, we're almost done with it, really. I mean, build the front end. I know there's a lot to it, but the steering. I didn't show you the steering. Holy smokes, is that smooth. Non-alloy, just plastic. Uh, but it is ba uh, ball raced, so bearings underneath the bridge, and then four eight fifties on each side of the arms. And I mean, you look at that thing; it's like so smooth. So yeah, moving along to step sixteen, we're building another set of UJs. So basically, it's a do-over with C hubs added. I'll see you in a second with the front end. I'm probably not going to bring you back um, in between. I'm just going to build it. You guys have seen enough of them. It's a Durga or a DB01. There's a bazillion, maybe a bazillion and one videos on them on YouTube. So, see you in a bit. And bag B is done. There's your fronts on. Steering knuckles. Everything feels good. A little bit tight, but that's to be expected on a new build. Bag C is going to be big bores. As well as steering arms. So, tons of fun here. Give you soft damper oil. Black springs, which is awesome. And then... Four hexes. Good deal. So I'm a little concerned in that I don't have any metal steering arms. Oh, I do. They're right in there. I was asking myself earlier, I'm like, what the heck is going on with missing links? I had 445s, which make up, which make up the links themselves, but I didn't have, uh, I didn't have anything short for steering arms. I was like, well, it must be in bag C. Sure enough. Do you guys hate staples? I usually cut the bag so that I don't have to deal with staples. Oh, so many O-rings with big bores. Absolutely insane. I guess that's better than no O-rings. Take some containers. So I'm going to get started here building some shocks and I'll bring you back like I usually do. I'm going to take everything I got here for containers. E clip. Come out of there. Thank you. One more bag. I know it doesn't make for great video. I'm sorry. Still have a bag of shims here. 
All right, see you in a second. Well, you can see wheels on it. Shocks are on it. I absolutely love those, those black cap big bores. They just look so good with the carbon fiber. Now I know the yellow wheels aren't stealthy, but uh, they're full 12 millimeter hex hub, right? So that wheel's on lopsided. I have to straighten that out. So um, because they're 12 millimeter hex hub, most of the wheels that I have here are pin on or an eight millimeter hex. So I have a set of white hex hub wheels that I could always dye if I wanted to, but I'll probably just find the right ones. Yeah, I had a feeling that's what the case was. So I don't know why Tamiya does this. They, they're going to do a hex hub wheel, but they're going to do it with a pin on style hex where the pins can fall out. It's like, well, why wouldn't you just do the same thing you did on the back? Drives me crazy their mentality sometimes with some of this stuff. Makes absolutely no sense. Much better. Um, makes no sense. So yeah, black wheels for the next video. Or maybe they'll be like a dark gray. we probably dye the white ones. What the hell? We'll get some black dye and we'll dye them. They end up like a charcoal color. That's fine. Dark body, dark wing. But I haven't decided um, what yet. So... Let me clean up the mess. We'll end this video and uh, we'll have to see what what I dream up for the next video. So that's going to wrap up this video of the DB01 Triple R. Um, I hope you guys liked it. So I don't know if I mentioned it before, but it's kit 84421. It's produced in 2015, so it's eight years old. Um, so not terribly old, but extremely hard to find. I don't know what the, how many what if they made them in large numbers or not. Um, but obviously the DB01 is still available today. So it's uh, it's kind of Tamiya's flagship four wheel drive for and say the I mean at this point it's it's probably the most capable. Um, four-wheel drive chassis they offer to date. I don't know how the TD4 would compare to this in a race standpoint. You know what I mean? So I think I think the uh, the TD4 is a great chassis, but as far as like racetrack spec, um, I'm not quite sure. And it's shaft driven, so it's going to be completely different. So I apologize for the last clip if I was if I seemed a little bit put off. I was I was on like hour eight or nine. So at the time I was building this, I was actually masking and painting the PB Mini Mustang. So I had three hours or so into masking that before I started this. And then I pushed five hours straight through this um, and ended with that last clip last night. Woke up this morning, refreshed, put the servo in, got the battery, battery bracket put in. And uh, just did some adjustments on the shocks themselves. I didn't realize the shock tower that I had grabbed, I had two, and they weren't the same for the rear. This is the high, um, I forget what they call it, but it's uh, maybe like high clearance carbon shock tower. And they have a low clearance carbon shock tower as well. Um, and I didn't even realize that I had them both. I just grabbed one that said rear. And when I was looking at the ones that were left over this morning, because I, I want to set for my Baldry, um, I don't have another front. I have another rear, but it was different. It's holes cut in the back. And I was like, what the hell? I'm like, that, the other one doesn't have holes. So that's when I realized that this is the high, I forget what it's called, high clearance or something. It's, it sits a little bit higher than the standard one. And then I started looking for another front one for the Baldry and... All, a lot of this stuff has been discontinued. So like carbon shock towers from Tamiya, they're impossible to find. And a lot of the DB01 hop-ups as well, um, the prices on them are just outrageous because it's just scalpers now. So I've got a bag of bling that I had bought years ago. I'm glad I bought it when I bought it because the pricing now is crazy. But I did happen to notice that Nick Walker, um, so 
ranch his eBay store is eBay UK, but it's his it's like ranch and then there's some numbers, six four five nine or something like that. But if you Google or search eBay UK DB01, he sells a pair of carbon shock towers for the DB01. It's like 35 pound, I think, for the set. Um, so if anyone out there is looking for carbon for their DB01, check out eBay UK and definitely uh, ring up Nick because he does awesome carbon work. I've got a bunch of carbon top force chassis from Nick. Uh, still have yet to build one, but I do have the chassis. So I'll probably order a set from him for the Baldry. Like I said, I do have a Tamiya rear, but whatever. Carbon's carbon. It's not like you can see that it's from Tamiya or from Nick, and Nick does a great job. Um, so yeah, at some point we'll have to get the Baldry out with the bag of bling and, uh, and do that one up in blue. But uh, as far as this one goes... It's going to stay black. And then I started searching for black hex dish wheels from Tamiya. And I don't know that Tamiya ever made black dish wheels in full 12 millimeter hex front and rear. They do make a white that you could dye black. Um, I can't find the white hex dish wheels either. You can only find the rear hex. But I think what I decided to do is, at one point a while back, I had bought in the Stardish wheels in gray. I forget what car they came on. It may have been like the Aero Advanti. I think it was the Aero Advanti. May have come with gray Stardish wheels. And I think those would actually look good depending on what we do with the body. So if we do like a black body with gray highlights, um, the knees with the black tires would probably look good. And those, of course, are full 12 millimeter hex. And then, so we'll have to see. We have some options. I'm definitely going with a Baldry body set on this chassis. So you basically have a choice. I'm... I think, I think the original 501X body will fit on it. I also know the Durga body will fit on it. I And those kind of have a lot of the same characteristics the way the cockpit is. The, 50, the 511 slash 502 body set should also fit on this. And so should... The, obviously the Durga will fit on this and those two bodies have a lot of the same characteristics so I think I'm going to do a Durga body with the racing wing and then I'm going to do obviously TRF decals um, so I think that's the plan um, always subject to change but obviously we will see this car again I almost put the 501X steering stabilizer set that I have on this but obviously that's been discontinued as well and I don't know that it necessarily needs it I have a 501X sitting in my cabinet and it does not have the steering stabilizer set on it so I'm thinking if I'm going to use that hop up on a car it's probably going to get put on the 501 not the db one rrr um, just my thoughts. So I actually opened it and was about to mount it and then realized it was the only one I had and that there was a discontinued and no one has them on eBay anywhere. So I very gently put it back in the package, put the cover back on it, stapled it back closed and tucked it back away. I'm like, no, we're not going to do that right now. Maybe someday it'll get put on it, but we'll have to see. I don't know what my plans are for this car. You know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm definitely going to run it. Um, I don't know that I'm going to, I don't know that I'm going to run it hard. I don't know. I don't know. I may fall in love with it and it just may become a runner, but I have so many runner cars already. Like if I, my go-to runner cars, my Kyosho ZX5. So I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I bought the kit because I fell in love with Mark's build. Not because I needed another runner. Not because I thought this would be cool in the cabinet. So, I mean, you can build, take a Durga and put big bores on it. And build this spec chassis very easily with hop-ups and blue bling. Right? So, it's not 
it's not like it's a it's it's not rare in the sense that people can't build it on their own um so yeah i don't know i don't know what i'll do it's cool as hell don't get me wrong i love i love the chassis and the way it looks but uh i i have no clue what my plans are usually it's very distinct run it once put it in a cabinet or it's a runner that i can go to anytime i want to um i usually have a pretty clear plan for the cars that i'm building whereas this one i don't um whatever it is what it is time will tell so we'll have to see in the next video what we decide to do with the body um and 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 how we're going to finish this thing off and maybe that will help me to decide it is super super smooth with those gear diffs the oil filled gear diffs are a great diff um i know a lot of people the durga may come with ball diff in the rear standard but i know a lot of people struggle with those ball diffs in the in the sense that they'll just crank them right up and use the slipper clutch as uh as their safeguard so if you're not already subscribed, I'd ask you to consider subscribing to support the channel. If you do, make sure you turn on your notifications so you're notified of the videos that we put out. Um, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the DB01 chassis. Do you have one? Do you have a triple R? Um, did you want a triple R and you couldn't find one or you couldn't get one? Were they extremely hard to find? I know for me... I, it was hard because it had already been discontinued for years but i know some of you guys out there are racers and may have raced this chassis in this configuration so i'd love to hear uh whatever information you have on it um let me know and uh if you liked the video throw me a thumbs up if you didn't throw me a thumbs down um it's all good so until next time we'll see you soon thanks